What's Better Today? And welcome to the Leadership Advantage podcast by Dr. John Kenworthy. The Leadership Advantage isn't some magic pill or silver bullet to instant success as a leader, but I'm sharing the art and neuroscience of hacking expert leadership to unstuck your potential in life and work. Hey there, and welcome to this episode of the Leadership Advantage podcast with me, John Kay. In this episode, we're exploring how you can influence and motivate anyone or everyone. We're even going to learn some lessons from the President of the United States of America and just how he won the election. Jeff was a fabulous speaker. He just sat on a bar stool at the front of the room. He had no slides, no props, just sat and talked. And within minutes, he had everybody in the room on the edge of their seats, eagerly nodding and ready to follow him wherever he went. None of us in the room had met Jeff before. In fact, none of us had a clue who he was. This quiet, unassuming man simply walked to the front and sitting on that bar stool began to speak and just captivated everyone. Jeff shared why some adverts worked and some just fall flat how some adverts tapped universal appeal and others neglected to do so. The good news is that you don't need to spend millions of dollars on creating a fantastic TV advert to influence and motivate people. (laughs) The great news is that you can easily tap into the four universal appeals. And I'll come back to those four universal appeals in a moment. You should remember that in the triangle of influence, that the motivation to change is the result of the evaluation of the personal benefits gained and the personal cost in the resources required to achieve a specific outcome. If you haven't listened to that podcast yet, then I urge you to do so later. You can find a link through leadershipadvantage.com forward slash podcast and search for the Triangle of Influence or just go to the show notes for this particular episode and you'll find it there. Whatever the outcome that you wish somebody to do is buying a new toothpaste or a new car. You might be wanting to give your time to serve in a soup kitchen or share your wisdom with a stranger. What happens is we weigh up in our minds what we get from the action that we're going to take and what it costs us. We will then be motivated to act when our perceived benefits outweigh our perceived cost. Because influence is maths. When the perceived value is greater than the perceived cost, we are motivated to act on the change. If you know what I am likely to perceive as beneficial and what I perceive as costly, then you should find it easier to influence me. And when we are influencing someone that we know well, we can influence them far more easily. For example, if I want to go to a particular holiday destination with my wife and she wants to go elsewhere, I might emphasize all the aspects of the type of holiday she desires, honestly, regarding my preferred destination. I might lay on some evidence to add credence to my interpretation, such as photos, trip advisor recommendations, and so on. If I want to buy a particular car model or motorbike and she would prefer another, I might focus on specific qualities of my chosen car 
that I know will appeal to her. It's important. It's not manipulation. It's just a conversation. It's something we all do every day. We will sway or steer others towards our preference. We are in the position of influence every time someone allows us to communicate with them. Most of the time, we are unconsciously influencing entirely based on our personal biases. But that's selfish, John. Yes, you're right, I am. So are you. So is the person beside you. I am and you are. Even when someone is apparently altruistic, the reality is that they get something valuable personally from being so. But what happens if you don't know the other person well? How do you influence them then? One of the key things to understand about influence and persuasion is that the idea that everyone is rational is misleading. Okay, it's totally misleading. Because motivation, that is the desire to act on change in thinking and behavior, is not just maths. It's chemistry. Now, you wish you'd paid more attention attention in science class, don't you? It's okay. I recorded an earlier podcast on hacking motivation, and in it I share all about the chemistry of motivation and how you can hack it to be happier. Let's look at the chemistry of motivation. Chemistry involves three major chemicals, dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. And in the show notes, I share how each of these on their own develop certain feelings or responses and what happens in the combination. So for example, when we have dopamine and serotonin, we look at the the way that gives us appetite for something. Dopamine and norepinephrine, or adrenaline as you probably know it, causes attention to be given. So what we're looking at is dopamine is a happy chemical. Motivation, which is the fruit of influence, is created in large part by this neurochemical dopamine. It's known as the happy chemical. Dopamine is the chemical you have flowing in your brain and bloodstream when you feel motivated. In part, there is a rational conscious process, essentially the maths I outlined uh, earlier, but preceding the maths, before the rational conscious thinking, the chemistry is already underway. Some refer to this as the lizard response before the conscious or human response, but I found it better to use Daniel Kahneman's view of fast thinking and slow thinking. And if you haven't read the book about fast and uh, thinking fast and thinking slow, you really ought to. Your emotional or the chemical response is fast, it's quick, it's your system one. Your rational, conscious and deliberate processing is slow and requires much more energy on your part. So the emotional response has already been processed momentarily before the conscious thinking kicks in i.e. you are already emotionally motivated before you can be rationally motivated. Now, people are more easily influenced by people who show empathy for their situation and can be trusted, something we discussed in the last episode of The Leadership Advantage. But more than that, people will do anything for those who encourage their dreams, allay their fears, justify their failings, or help them throw rocks at their enemies. That is, I appeal to basic emotions to trigger, also known as motivate, a positive response from you. Each, when used correctly, causes an emotional response. 
some of the most effective and powerful ways of influencing appeal to these four universal motivators. They're to encourage your dreams, allay your fears, justify your failings, or I help you throw rocks at an enemy. So let's take these one by one and think about how they are used in advertising in common places that you will have seen on television or on radio or even in the newspaper. And how they are used in politics as an example. You will be able to use them in any other situation. So let's start with the first one, which is encouraging somebody's dreams. Every single person I've ever met has dreams. They want to achieve something in their life. They may not know exactly what it is, but it is better than whatever they've achieved thus far in life. A lot of people, when you ask them, money, more money, for what? You just go through. They want more. We want more. To influence someone, you can encourage their dreams. That the benefit they will attain moves them towards their dreams. You might be encouraging the dreams of your child to get into a great university if they study hard. Or more relevant perhaps, the new iPad you will buy them if they get an A++. You could be encouraging someone to diet or exercise by communicating how good they will look and feel and hence be more attractive. Think of any advert you have ever seen for a motor car. Whatever the car is, it will be driving through usually an urban landscape and of course, that urban landscape is almost free of other vehicles. There isn't the stress at all. You don't notice any of the stress, but it's supremely comfortable inside that car and it moves with grace. It is fast, it is beautiful, it is smooth. Everything that you want from a car, all they are doing is encouraging your dreams to have a more comfortable modern car. Of course, Donald Trump, in his presidential election through 2016 into 2017, was talking about making America great again. It's encouraging the dreams of people. He was appealing to the white middle class to make America great again, going back to the good old days. Reagan did similarly. All leading politicians, when they are bidding to become your president, your prime minister, will make promises that appeal to the dreams of the voters. How can you encourage somebody else's dreams? And what's the second one? The second one is allaying their fears. So you may be encouraging their dreams or let's allay their fears. Everyone has fears. Most people will admit that they fear failure to some extent. Many people fear death. Uh, does anybody like to be rejected? Actually enjoy it? Hmm. Some are afraid of flying. Uh, and according to studies, more people fear public speaking than anything else. To influence someone to act, you could allay their fears. That they will, their benefit will be greater confidence, for example, competence, or simply the courage to act at all. You might also reduce the cost burden by allaying someone's fears of undertaking the action you are proposing. It's not as difficult as you may think as you may suspect. It's actually quite easy. Here you are, just three steps to success. Here is my magic formula. Nobody can fail. To allay the fears that someone buys something they don't need, you can guarantee their satisfaction or set up a payment plan to spread the cost over time.
Many organizations, when they advertise their products or their services, will place a guarantee. And the better the guarantee, money back guarantees, time guarantees, satisfaction guarantees, and so on, is all to allay your fear that you might be making a bad choice. Or they'll use social proof of other users who sing the praises of how wonderful this product is and how it solved everything. In other words, you are using the proof that other people have found this to be trustworthy. Allaying people's fears is very often about the cost, but it could be about taking the action at all. Everybody can get into university, no child left behind. All of these types of ideas where people are saying it's really possible for you too. Anybody can do it. And again, this is going back to Donald Trump and the whole idea of making America great again is all of this thing about the American dream, that anybody can make it. So they're building that up, that it's possible for absolutely anybody. You've just got to follow these seven steps, 10 steps, whatever it is. How can you allay people's fears about what you're asking them to do? Thirdly, you can justify their failings. Uh, we've all failed in our lives. Many of these failings we keep to ourselves through a false sense of pride or Worse, that others will think badly of us if we admit them. We all have them. Nobody likes to fail. It hurts. And it isn't so good when our failure is not our fault. A powerful tool in the influencer's arsenal is to have enough courage themselves to admit their failings to others. You are not alone. And that there is a perfectly good reason, excuse for failing. One of the biggest issues my clients tell me they have is lack of time. That there are simply so many more pressing things to do. And this is true. So it's not their fault. It's a modern society. It's their boss's fault for organising meetings. It's people who are imposing on their time. It's a modern society. So it's no surprise that you haven't found the time to do this. But just think of the benefits you would get if you took just five minutes each day. Now, you're already being swept up in the argument and nodding away, aren't you? Of course, you can easily find a common enemy. And this has been one of the most valuable tools in the political armory. It's blaming somebody else. Very often it's choosing a common enemy that you can say, well, if we build a wall so the Mexicans can't get in, that will solve our problems. Hmm. Of course, Adolf Hitler used this and blamed the Jews and IS blamed the Gentiles and, the, and everybody. So everybody's blaming somebody else. The English blame the French, the French blame the English. It becomes impossible for us to understand whether there's any truth in anything, but we want to believe that it's not our fault. It's somebody else's fault. It's not your fault that you are not in a leadership position. It's your boss's fault. It's your HR fault. It's whoever it is, so long as it's not you. In advertising, we find common enemies all over the place. Watch any toothpaste advert. The enemy is plaque or dirty teeth or bad breath. Petroleum adverts, it's dirty engines, it's uh, ruined environment. For a financial institution, the enemy is not making enough money. Not having enough money, not investing enough, not saving enough. The enemy could be the economy. The enemy can be anything 
that we can manipulate and say it's not your fault, it's the fault of the environment, it's circumstances. That justifies it and enables us to justify ourselves and become motivated to act on that information. And this is really all about number four. This is helping people throw rocks at their enemy. There's nothing quite like a common enemy to unite people. And that enemy doesn't have to be other people. An enemy could be as simple as dirty hair, greasy hair, unmanageable hair. Watch any shampoo advert. The enemy could be your weight, but of course that's not your fault that you're overweight. It's your diet. And you can probably blame your parents for your bad diet. See, do you know anyone who isn't struggling with something? Overwork, stress, a boss who doesn't recognize their efforts, an impossible sales target? Whatever their enemy, the chances are pretty high that you have had that enemy in the past too. Concur, agree, and help them throw rocks at it. Have you ever attended a meeting and wondered why you were there? And what was the point of a meeting at all? Of course you have. You're probably going to one today. Who's the enemy? Well, meetings are the enemy. Or are they? The common boss who hosts the meetings or the lack of structure to the meetings. Whatever is the common enemy. Why is it important to understand these four universal appeals? Well, you are being influenced every day. If you watch television at all, you'll be bombarded with messages designed to influence you. Some of them have a lasting effect, others less so. And you, you influence other people every day as well. Some people you will influence just by being alive. They could be emulating you. If you have kids, they are emulating you. If you're in a bad mood, they'll know it and change their behavior accordingly. I remember when my dad came home from his London office many years ago, when I was a young kid, I would hide in my room because he would always be in a bad mood after a train journey from London. You influence some people deliberately. And for those times when you are successful, the chances are extremely high that you appeal to one or more of these four universal appeals. You encouraged their dreams. You allayed their fears. You helped them justify their failings and or you help them throw rocks at an enemy of theirs. But there's something very, very critical here that I don't want you to miss. You might have got it already, which is terrific, but maybe you've missed it, which is okay, because most people do miss this. It's their, their, T-H-E-I-R, their dreams, their fears, their failings, their enemy. It's not about your wants, your dreams, your concerns, your desires. It's all about the other person. Just go back and listen to what Donald Trump says. And whether you like him or not doesn't matter. What he is always doing is he's always referring outward. He's looking at other people. He's talking about other people, even though it could easily be about himself. It's about the other person. It's about the electorate. It's about America. See, influence is about motivating the other person to change for their benefit, ultimately. But sure, you, you may ask, I want to influence someone else for my benefit. Well, yeah, that's of course very true. See, when the benefits of, of change is mutual, we call that a win-win. But the whole point of influence and effective influence long-lasting, sustainable influence is it's not about you, it's about them. 
If it's about you and not about them, you are not influencing them. You are either manipulating or coercing them. And that, my friend, will lead to them desiring, if not taking, revenge upon you. But, yeah, can't the benefit be mutual? For sure, if they benefit, and incidentally you do too, that's wonderful. We do call that win-win, don't we? So what's the solution to having sustainable good influence? Well, you become an unstoppable force of influence when you combine the math, the rational, and the emotions, the chemistry of influence. The motivation to change is the dopamine. The cost of change and resources that are going into it is all about building up the norepinephrine or the adrenaline. And the value that change brings is all about serotonin. And when we've got all of those, we have a positive response based on the mixture. See, what you need to do is you appeal to encourage their dreams, but it must also be factually supported with tangible value. When you ally their fears, your suggestions to them to think or act differently is not just hyperbole. When you justify their failings, it's not just politic, it is truth and your suggestion of change will bring a genuine solution to their problem. And when you help them throw rocks at an enemy, it is a real enemy, and not one that you made up as an excuse. The power to influence anyone and everyone now lies in your hands. May I suggest that you use it wisely and kindly. Be greatly blessed and go be a positive influence today and encourage someone you know to become a better leader by joining as an Advantage VIP member. They can sign up at leadershipadvantage.com forward slash podcast. this episode and we'll share some highlights with the people you care about most. My team and I are working on a series of exciting new projects in this art and neuroscience of hacking expert leadership to unstuck your true potential in life and work. To learn more, visit leadershipadvantage.com or just search for Dr. John Kenworthy and connect with me.